Welcome to my 3D Vision performance review of the GTX 660 Ti. So in this case, we have Galaxy's GC Dual Fan Card, and we're comparing it to a couple of different scenarios. So number one is we're comparing it to a last generation solution. So we've got a GTX 560 Ti on the test bench. We're going to be running three different games. Uh, the Elder Scrolls, what is it, four, five, I don't know, something. Oh, um, Skyrim, the latest one. We're going to be running Crisis 2. Slick really cares that I say that it's Elder Scrolls 5. Okay, it's good Slick. Um, so it's Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim, and then we've got Crisis 2 and Metro 2033, which we will be doing our usual run-throughs. We're going to be using our high details and ultra details that we normally use to benchmark these cards, except throwing 3D into the mix actually dramatically increases the load on the cards. So what we discovered is that, okay, okay, what we were trying to find out is how does the 660 Ti compare to the 670, which is $100 more, and how does it compare to the last generation equivalent card, the 560 Ti, in 3D performance? So right, there's, so there's a lot more load on the card in 3D just because it has to render both the left eye and the right eye image at the same time. And uh, you can see here that we are actually getting only about 20 FPS in Crisis 2 using 3D Vision. So look through one of the lenses, if you can, if there's a way. So you can see that the lagginess level is actually quite high. I hope you can see that. Anyway, the point is that it is. So let's have a look at what kind of performance results we got. We're not actually running a benchmark right now. We're all done with the benchmarking. So here we go. Let's create some graphs, charts and graphs. That's like my favorite thing ever. So select data and uh, we're going to go with our 3D vision performance and we're going to look at crisis two first. Oh, 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 I did it wrong. Excel doesn't like it when you select things in the wrong order. So we're going to look at minimum FPS as well as average FPS. We're going to put in some data labels. So you guys are seeing the whole graph creation process here from start to finish including boldness. Okay, so the 560 Ti reference gets pwned in Crisis 2. Minimum FPS is about a third of what you see on a 660 Ti um, from the latest generation of NVIDIA products using a Kepler GPU. So remember, 560 Ti is Fermi, and this says Battlefield 3 1080p Ultra, but what it means is Crisis 2 3D. There we go. So now let's pull up another chart and graph for you guys. Um, in this case, it says uh, it says PE, but actually it's not the 660 Ti PE. It's the uh, 660 Ti GC from Galaxy. So pay no pay no mind to that. Okay. Yeah, these are this is like my super professional approach to to graphing for tonight. It's actually it actually is 5 a.m. So the 660 Ti launches in an hour, which means that uh, we've we've sort of given up on um, a lot of things and we're very tired. Both me and Slick. Slick's claim. Oh yeah, he's nodding. I thought he was claiming to be not tired, and I was going to be like, liar, liar. Uh, adding data labels, bolding the data. So you can see here again, the 660 Ti basically wouldn't even run like Slick couldn't do anything, average FPS of one. Um, whereas with a newer solution, whether it's the faster GPU, whether it's the additional VRAM, which is needed a lot more so in 3D vision than it is in non-3D vision mode, we were able to get a minimum of 30 FPS with our 660 Ti. And uh, this is a bit of an anomaly where our 670 loses, but it is what it is. Um, lots of weird things happen in benchmarking. We try not to question it too much. If you question it, then you might end up understanding it, which is madness. <laughs> Sparta or something. Let's go with Metro 2033. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I hope no one watches this video. I think that'll be better. Metro 2033. And once again, this 560 Ti gets absolutely creamed with a whopping 2.5 FPS. I barely even could make the jump that I have to do for my benchmarking run. And the 660 Ti uh, also gets crushed and so does the 670, but they do a lot better than this one by a, like a order of magnitude. So what we learned today is that the 660 Ti is a worthy upgrade if you're using a 560 and you wanna go with a 3D vision solution and that the 660 performs pretty closely to a 670, except in one weird instance where it actually outperformed it. I wonder if Slick copied the wrong number down. 
He says no. I think I was the one who you worked on that. Yeah, I worked on those. <laughs> okay, so one way or another, the 660 Ti is an awesome video card, and my other videos on about this video card are better. You should probably watch those. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and higher quality videos than this one. And um, don't forget to, no, I just said don't forget to subscribe. It's like five in the morning. <laughs>